So I am recording everything. So welcome to um, Alan's Audacity 101. I'm going to show you the, the basics and go through really quick um, how you might do uh, this one of the assignments, which is the sound effects story. So you've gotten Audacity installed. That was the first major hurdle. Um, one thing is, is obviously you can record directly into Audacity. And so um, one thing, and again, the buttons may be slightly different on uh, Windows, but somewhere you just want to make sure that you have the right sound source. So built-in microphone is my sound source, and depending on what your computer is set up with. And you can turn on this thing to start monitoring. So you can see that's showing my sound levels. And uh, you can get a sense that that's a little bit high, so you can actually drop. Uh, check, 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 check. So you want to make sure you got good sound levels. And it's as simple as pressing the record button. So now I'm actually recording, and I think I should say something interesting that I'm going to use in my story. So this first bit I will get rid of, but oh, I feel so tired. Work is stressing me. I don't get to relax. I need to get away. OK, and then you stop. And that's, that's all there is to recording. Um, and you see that that's what sound looks like. If, I mean, you probably have experience mm -hmm. seeing it. it. It's got a shape. And in Audacity, you can uh, easily play back what you recorded. So now I'm actually recording. And I think I should say something interesting that I'm going to use in my story. So this first bit I will get rid of. But oh, I feel. And so I, I, if I want to get rid of this, I just, it's just like text. That's all you it's do. Mm, yeah. Okay. And so I pay attention to the, how things start. Get away. See that little, you see that little thing here at the end? Mm. I'll play it again. And you can, it? you can zoom in. That was me pressing the stop button. It picked that up. So when you get into audio editing, you sometimes start paying attention to these minute details. Yeah, leave a little space. Leave yeah, leave a little space. Easy. I can, so get, can easily chop it up. I can get rid of that. Yeah. Um, and that kind of shape, that is pretty good sound levels. If it's if your sound recording is too high, they're going to be bouncing against the top. They'll be cut off. You'll get distortion. And if your sound input levels are too low, the waves are going to be very tiny. And although you can try to make them loud, you're going to get noise. That's what John talked about okay. um, last week. So I have a thing I can use in my story. So you can record the sound of your own voice. Um, but sound alone, that recorded voice is a lot of, um, you know, I talked about how there's no background. So uh, it's kind of empty space, like I'm talking out in space. So what we can do pretty easily in Audacity is import other sounds that we may have recorded on other devices or things we may have downloaded. And it puts them into these tracks. So under um, the file menu is import and audio. And I am going to go to a place where I have um, hopefully some sounds that I want to use in my story. So I'm going to take the first one. Um, I'm going to take this one called clock ticking. And it's a sound of clock ticking. Now, what it did was, and I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so I can see, every time you import something new, it puts it in a new track. Now, you may notice the first one has two layers on it. That recorded in stereo because the microphone um, on my laptop has stereo. Um, the, the one below it is in mono uh, because I think I used just a simple, I think I used my iPhone and it only recorded in mono. But all that stuff will work together. And it puts it in the, the beginning. Um, so what, what's going to happen is when I try to play this back, oh, I feel so tired, work is stressed. So I, my sounds are interfering with, e with each other. Um, so what I may want to do, there's a couple things that I can do to um, take care of that. So Because I want to be able to make sure my ticking clock sound is, is what I want. Can you just play the ticking clock by itself? Yes. But what you do is I want to mute this other track. You see that's gray? And that gives me the room to do just the ticking tack. You see, that's kind of... Um, it's not the best one. There's a lot of noise in the background. The clock was up on my wall, and I, I got up on my chair and put the phone right next to it. Uh, but the sound was still pretty low because the clock is pretty soft. So you get a little bit of noise in the background. So it's probably not the best sound clip for a ticking clock. And we could easily get a better ticking clock elsewhere. But I'm, I'm going to work with what I have. Um, so what happens is I've got this kind of uh, thing of the clock. 
Um, and so there's a little bit of blank in the front, which may be okay, but I'm going to get rid of that. And so I actually want to start with that because I want my, my thing to start with just the sound of that clock, kind of the om ominous um, clock. You can do some things, and this is where it gets fun to play, is if you um, select everything just in this track, there's all these kind of built-in effects that you can do to your sound. And so I encourage you to explore um, some of these. I can use this one called Reverb. And generally, you get all these kind of crazy things that you can control. I don't really know what they do, but you can sort of listen to a uh, sample what that will sound like. And it may not be clear, reverb gives an effect of like an echoey room. Um, so all of a sudden I'm transforming my original sound just by applying reverb to it. Um, so try some of these effects out, um, see what they do. One of the other things, you can see while well, I, I planned this because I didn't plan this. So I, here's my voice. I feel so tired. So let's say I'm not crazy about my voice. That's, everybody's like, oh, I hate the sound of my recorded voice. Um, so under the effect of these real neat things called um, change the pitch. So this means I can change this, the way my voice sounds. So I can make it go higher. If I want to be Mickey Mouse. Ah, I feel so tired. Work is stressing me. I don't get to relax. So you can do the whole chipmunk thing. I really don't like the chipmunk. Um, and you can sort of drop it a little bit. And you, you can see there's different ways to do this. There's like musical tones, there's frequency tones. I just use this slider. Um, so. Oh, I feel so tired. Oh, uh, maybe a little bit more. Oh, I feel so tired. Work is stressing me. I don't get to relax. <laughs> So that's oh, yeah, kind of, that's kind of a neat effect. I sound like this kind of robotic. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> so the the change pitch is really interesting because this is change pitch without changing tempo. There's another one called change tempo, which can speed up music and slow it down. But if I use that one, it's going to change the duration of my sound clip. And sometimes you don't want to lose the length uh, of your clip. So um, I'm going to apply that one. Um, and then I'm just going to uh, mute that again because I want to work with my other sound effects. Could you just remind me where you were getting those effects? Which button did you Oh, have? sorry, you can't see it on the screen. Oh, there's a menu. Yeah, there's a menu okay. called effect. You can see oh, way up there. Okay. Yeah, there's the top menu. So um, most of the things you'll do are under the file menu for import and save and export. Um, so. Um, the other tool that is super useful is this one called, um, it's called the time shift tool. <laughs> I just figured out. And so I don't want my voice to come in early. I want that clicking sound. So I can just take, oh, I got to activate it, I think. I can take this whole thing and um, I got this little, uh, I get this little nub on the end, I think. I can take this whole clip because there's only one in the line here and I can move it on down the line. So now what happens is if I unmute this first one and I rewind and I play, clock in the empty room. That was a little bit long, wasn't it? Yeah, so um, this tool is like one of the most useful things because you want to be able to move things mm -hmm. around in the timeline. You can also do things like, um, I can take sections of that, and when you highlight something and hit the space bar, it just will play that segment. So if you just want to hear what a certain segment sounds like, just use the space bar. You can be really repetitive. And you have available everything that you do in editing text, you've got copy paste. So I can go to my um, edit menu, I can go copy, and I can put this down here. Um, I'm gonna put it out here in front a couple times. So I can repeat uh, segments. Um, and then with this little time shift tool, um, I can move them around individually. So um, I could have this whole sequence where now I'm sort of like this robot who repeats himself. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, and in fact, like that that first, uh, I just want. Maybe I'll get rid of that. So it's just the yeah, I feel so tired. Get the idea about what's going on here. And now I think if I, because now I've got these different segments. Now if I want to move this stuff, I think I have to select it all. Is that how it works? Um, or there's this thing under the edit menu called um, clip boundaries and join. And I can put all those little separate things together into a single blob. That makes it easy. How did you do that again? Uh, under edit oh, okay. is clip boundaries. Yeah. And uh, that's join. Sometimes you want to do the opposite. Sometimes you want to split. So you can click where you want to split to happen, like right here. And I'm going to go edit. Uh, clip boundaries. I'm going to do split. And what that does is takes this little chunk so I can move them apart. So edit, uh, I don't know if there's an equivalent in, in word editing to splitting and joining, but um, it's very useful in your sound editing. So now I've got these two things. Uh, what you can also, when you import, let's say I'm going to use um, this walking down the stairs, and I'm going to use this traffic one. You can multiple select and import. So if you've got like a bunch of little sounds, mm -hmm. um, you just bring them in, um, bing, bang, boom. Um, you can see they have different shapes to them as well because they are, um, they're different sound forms again. So this traffic, uh, let's see if I can just isolate it. So I'm going to mute this and mute this and mute this. So uh, this is a clip I... So it's a bunch of traffic noise that someone recorded, and we're going to do some things to manipulate it. So question, yes. where, where it's hitting the yellow on top and below, is it that that part is maybe too loud or something? That's not bad. That's I, I, okay? Yeah, a couple, yeah, a couple sharp peaks hitting is not bad. When, when, when you know you're clipping, it's called, you'll see the top is just truncated off. All the time. And, and, and I will, um, let me see if I can... Trying to think how I could show you an example of this. Um, so let's see. Um, I'm going to turn my microphone all the way up and I'm going to record. Hey, what if this is really too loud? I'm too close to the mic. You notice that it was playing that in the background. Um, but now when I play this back, it's going to be horrible. What if this is really too loud? I'm too so I'm getting all kinds of crazy distortion. And you can tell just by looking at the waveforms mm -hmm. that it's way out of whack. Seeing the regular so if you get something out of whack, just get rid of that, Take nuke, nuke that track. Um, so I got this traffic thing. So I want that to represent sort of, you know, my busy um, lifestyle. But I don't want the whole thing. Maybe I just want this little segment here. Um, one of the tools that's in here you can highlight that segment and just trim it and it gets rid of everything but that nice little segment that I want. And then I may just want to slide that over. Um, and what's happening is I'm sort of like, I'm not leaving gaps between my sounds. I want them to overlap so it kind of creates a sense of space. That ticking clock is going to blend into the traffic. Um, but to make it sound better, it's going to start really abruptly. So another really useful effect is like, I want to select just a few seconds and I'm going to do effect fade in. And you see what it does? And then you do the opposite on the other end and, um, you know, play with it, you know, how long the duration is. You can do a really long, long fade out or um, a really short one. And then, you know, the time units are at the top. So now I've got something like, and at the end. So it, it kind of just doesn't stop abruptly. Um, you, you know, you, when people first start this, they don't pay attention to those details. And when you have those sharp ends, it's, it's really disturbing um, when you listen to it. Um, so, Alan? Yes. What's the difference between the envelope tool? I usually use that, and I didn't even know about the fade in and fade out. It seems really easy. I'll show you. The envelope is, is like a more powerful version of that, and I'll, oh, I'll get okay. that. that. That's another key tool. Um, but again, like this little segment, um, it's a little bit loud. So if the entire track is a little bit, because sometimes background sounds, unless you want that to be like the primary thing going on, if you've got action overlapping it, 
um, you don't want that to compete. So you can drop the levels um, on the sound here. And it'll drop the, the complete, that's called gain. So it's like turning the volume on that entire channel down. Um, and you can also, if you want to go crazy with, um, you can offset the stereo effect. So you can have this uh, be mostly in the left speaker. Uh, some people do a lot of things where it sounds like things are going left to right. So um, if I was recording a scene in this room and I wanted a, an alien to land in that corner, uh, mm -hmm. maybe to give it that really strong effect, I would maybe put the aliens, hi, ah, welcome, I'm here to take over TRU. I might just put that in the left channel. And if you're listening on stereo, you're going to be like, the sound's going to be coming over from here. And then maybe this, I'll record Brian barging in to save me on the right. Um, I can't say I've ever really fooled around much with the, the stereo effect, but um, <coughs> it's, it's in there. Um, so I might use that sound effect, and I will probably, um, you know, I kind of like having... One thing you'll notice is that things start to get pretty crowded. So you can do things like you can shrink up these channels so you can see a little bit more. Um, I also use this. Um, there's a magnifier there to zoom, but I like this one better because it zooms where my cursor's at. So it lets you see it's, it's expanding the, the, um, the time unit so I can see more detail of what I'm doing here. Or the opposite, it'll contract. Um, so I have this like sound thing of the ticking clock. I kind of want that to go all the way through. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to paste it. And so the, the clock is like an ongoing theme in, in my, you know, the doom clock always going on. Um, and it'll be good. It'll be going on underneath my traffic too. You can't really hear the clock, right? Um, question yes. about saving. So say I think, I think, but I'm not sure that I might want that piece again later on in uh -huh. the story. Yeah. Can I just take that little piece and Good is there question. a library to save? You save them all on your computer, but um, parts. you can save um, export selected audio. Okay. So a, a few things about what I'm doing here. Let me just save this. Everything Audacity is called a project. So I'm saving this and I'm calling it a TRU demo. Um, a project is not a sound file. It's a collection of everything Audacity needs to be able to edit. So it's kind of like, do you do anything in Photoshop? Mm -hmm. So you end up with a PSD file. Now when you want to share an image with someone, you never send them a PSD file. That's what the Audacity project file is like. And they tend to be pretty big because they, they end up including all these libraries of um, sounds so um so end up here's my file it's called tru demo dot aup audacity is the file type um and it also has a folder in it and it'll, and you never look at this but this is where all your sounds get stored um so the project file is like the master so you can do all kinds of things when you're working within it so i can just take this particular if i like that ticking clock sound and like mm -hmm. i think i'm going to reuse it and I don't have it, I already have it as a file because I imported it. Yeah. But you may want to do something like, um, maybe I want to have this, both of those tracks saved together. It's like, wow, I could reuse that ticking clock with the traffic in thousands of course sites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you can just select a portion and you can do export selected audio. Right. And so that's going to make a sound file out of just that portion. Usually you do the whole thing because you had, you know, you, you save a complete thing. But um, that was a very good question. It's like I almost set that up. Um, the one that uh, Tishu was talking about that's um, really valuable is called the envelope tool, um, because sometimes you want um, you want to turn down the volume of the whole track, but sometimes you want to make the track like uh, if you have some uh, background music. Uh, when you bring it in, you want the music kind of loud so you can hear it, and then you want to drop it so it fades into the background. So I'm going to bring in, um, because I want to demonstrate this with something longer, I'm going to um, bring in a file I was, let's see where I was just working on this. Uh, uh, I already forgot. Um, uh, ah, demo thing, let's see, Audacity demo. T-Bone Shuffle. So I, I have this music that I brought in. 
It's Buddy Guy, and he's playing some music. So I have that whole thing, but um, what I want is like, um, let's see, I have so many things going on here, I kind of lost it. I've got a clock ticking, and at the top, um, that's my voice, I think. So we're gonna yeah, you're the voice, the voice. then the right. Top. Then the traffic. Yeah, then the traffic, and then uh, the walking I'll just leave out. i got enough things to demo here. So I can do this. I can take, I'm using my mouse here, and sometimes it's a little tricky. Um, I'm going to take everything in these three tracks, and you can use the sound tool, the time shifter, to move that all three of those um, out of the way. Because I want to start with Buddy Guy, you know. And so my music starts. And then I got my stuff coming, and the music's interfering with it. Um, so this kind of thing where you want different sound levels, sometimes you need, sometimes you have a recorded conversation. And if my mic is here and Gail's far away, her voice is very low, John showed us that before, I can actually go in and fine tune it so I can raise the amplitude of Gail's voice and lower the amplitude of my voice. Um, so um, the envelope tool lets you do the fine tuning for the volume controls. Um, and so the way it works is when you click this bar, it puts these little um, blue things on top, and those represent the sound levels. And so in the beginning, I went full sound, but right when my stuff comes in here, I'm gonna put in a little, I click it once and I get that little um, diamond. Those are like little marker points. So then I can just drag, drop this whole thing down, and I can sort of adjust the length of my fade out. And so I maybe wanna squeeze that way down so that my transition is smooth. So I kind of missed the mark there because my sound starts at around 15 seconds. So I can just, I can still tweak this. I can just pull this one over. And, um, and I really want to get it down low pretty quick. And I can even I can even get crazy and put another one in and drop it all the way down to nothing. And then later at the end, I want to fade out with Buddy Guy. So I click for another uh, marker point and then I'm going to pull this up. And then I'm going to say, well, that's enough Buddy Guy. Just get rid of the end. I'm going crazy here. I'm going to put a fade out. And so... Um, with the envelope tool, I could actually come in in the middle if I decided, well, there's a place I want Buddy Guy to come in strong again. So you can do all kinds of crazy um, controlled edits with your, your, with your sound. So I will go back now and just see. Feel free to snap. And the music comes on, you know. And in these, some of these uh, things that I've assembled, I've had, I've had like 15 tracks. Sometimes five is plenty, um, but sometimes you end up having a lot of these vertical tracks to control. But by putting things on top of each other, mm -hmm. I can introduce things like sound effects. Like I, I don't need to record a knock on the door. I can just bang on the table. Okay. Um, and so yeah, introduce little sound clips. So it's controlling them in time, which is horizontal and in kind of space and which is vertical and how you have the volumes on each track. And so the last thing, like once you get it sounding pretty good, um, now we want to go under file, which you can't see the menu up there, um, is export um, audio. So this is, this is going to be the whole thing. So I'm going to give this a file name. TRU demo is not very descriptive. So um, I'm called I am tired. Um, and then you do have other uh, file formats. Um, I can't even tell you what some of these are, but sometimes you may want stuff in a WAV format because it's full quality. 
Uh, when you put stuff on the web, that's why we want you to do MP3. Um, and what we just figured out um, when, when uh, Teishu pointed this out is if you don't get that funky MP3 um, plugin loaded, when you go to export as MP3, it's going to say, hey, I need that lame library. It'll have a download button. And it's a couple steps to figure out how to get it configured. Um, but because I've done that, um, most of the stuff we want for the web, we want to save as MP3. Uh, there are some quality um, settings that you can do. Um, generally, um, that's pretty good for a small file um, that will, um, that's for voice. If you're doing music, you may want to go up a little bit higher. Um, for our purposes, it doesn't matter a whole lot. I wouldn't fiddle too much with that. And then when you click Save, it's going to pop up this box. Well, it's going to be warned. Um, just letting me know that the final file is not going to have all these sounds because it's got to mix it, and that's okay because I still have my Audacity um, original project. Um, this information gets written to the file. It's called metadata. So it travels with the sound and it gives information. Now, it picked up all this information because the file I imported had metadata. Um, so most people don't even bother with this, but it's pretty handy when you share this um, file elsewhere. So I'm going to um, rename the artist, which is usually the person who is on or created the sign. Um, so it's going to be Alan. And the track is going to be um, I Am So Tired. Um, the album, if you build a collection of these, really doesn't matter. I just call my stuff the You Show. Um, track we don't use. The year, maybe I put 2015. The rest of the stuff doesn't really matter. I might just blank them out. Um, most typically, these are all going to be all empty on yours um, because th unless the music you imported has some metadata. Um, so, but I'm basically going to save that. And um, I'm actually almost done. <laughs> now, if I can remember where I saved this, uh, here it is. Um, actually, when I, pull, when I pull this up to play, um, well, for some reason it didn't say my, my metadata should be there, but there's my sound. Mm -hmm. And the music you use is your responsibility to yes. show it's yeah. usable. Yeah. Technically that's, yeah, technically that's not, that's probably copyrighted. So that's why we introduced you to some places like the Free Music Archive, yeah. um, where you can get stuff that's licensed. Um, there's another one that I use all the time for my audio projects. It's this guy, Kevin, it's, it's the site's called Incomptech, and he has all this royalty free music, and there are a lot of instrumental tracks. So if you need like ballroom music, or old fashioned ragtime, or dance music, um, his site is really good. So that, I wanted to sort of do that as kind of a, show you some editing things in Audacity. Okay. Um, Two questions. Yes. Question number one, when we were recording our single audio sounds, yes. what is a good length? I wasn't sure I stayed 20 seconds sometimes and then turned it off. It's I, always I, I didn't know how long to go. It's always better to record more because you can always go like cut it down. A whole minute so more than a minute? Well, whatever it is you want to be working with, I mean, if your final result you want it to be, you know, it's for, for this assignment, yeah, you probably don't need the individual songs to be that long, really. Um, yeah, it's for the sound effect story. The one we're talking about oh, is, is the next demo, uh, which is the thing that John did, where he, he took one sound of that inhaler and he used it repeatedly. So it was about picking like one isolated sound. Right. Um, and this will be fun to try to demo this because I've never done this before. Right. Um, for that one, you know, a couple seconds. I did. Um, I, I did. It, I did about three seconds of me blowing some noise into my harmonica. Um, but usually, when the you record, helps you. If it's too short, just repeat. If it's a pretty yeah. sound. Yeah. The worst thing is the first thing. The worst thing is when you hit the stop button too soon and you cut you yourself off. Yeah. So you, I mean, you probably if you've done video, you always know you want the camera to be started before you actually get to the part you want to film and you want to record more at the end, just a couple seconds. Right. Um, so it's a pretty good habit when you're recording to leave some stuff on the beginning to then. Okay, and the second question was about size. Have you been saving all these audio things like in a Dropbox? Where will you have a good storage space that could save a lot of audio projects you've done? The project files do take up space. Um, 
So I, I move mine off when I'm done the project. I put them onto a, an old hard drive if I think I ever want them again. Um, the only reason you need the audio project is if you think you're ever going to go back and re-edit. If it comes out perfectly and you're trying to save some file space um, and, and you're short on file space, once you have your final sound, you can delete all the Audacity project files. Um, it just means if you ever decide that you want to edit the thing again, um, it's like the same in Photoshop. If you open up the sound file, you won't have it all separated out into those nice layers. It's going to be all flattened. Um, so I would say for, for these projects, your files are going to be pretty small. I mean, it's only when you start building up, like, um, you know, we, used to have, we have our students do, like, radio shows, and they're about 30 minutes long. There's a lot of audio in there. And some of those start pushing a gig, um, which used to be a lot. Um, so those files grow big. The MP3 files that you save are, are pretty small. You know, this was Darcy's talk here last week. So this is a, an hour almost, and it's only 20 megabytes. That's what MP3 does. It compresses sound a lot. Um, to the audio files, it, it takes out 95% of the quality, according to Neil Young. Um, mm -hmm. But for spoken word, um, it, it doesn't matter quite as much. And when you're putting things on your website, the file size is a consideration because people have to download it before they, they can hear it, generally. Okay, and the SoundCloud step yes. is to now be able to share what you've done, right? So that's fairly simple. You have your SoundCloud account, you'll be able to import your MP3 file. Exactly, exactly. Pretty easy. Good question. And then share your link with somebody. You don't have to be, because you can upload it to your WordPress site. You can upload an MP3 file, and I can show you how that's done. Yeah, and you get you get a pretty nice player that's embeddable. Um, the SoundCloud makes it easier um, to share. Um, so this is my account. So I, I did some of these assignments recently, but all you do is go to upload. Um, you can choose the file. You can actually record directly into SoundCloud. So we we can do that right now. asking me for this stuff hello SoundCloud hello SoundCloud hello SoundCloud <laughs> man you are good <laughs> now all you get to do is basically um, the start and stop and then so um, that's pretty easy so we're gonna call this hello SoundCloud and you'd get the same thing here if you um, if you uploaded something. So you get to name that. You get to put a description, a demo, hello. Um, you can upload an image that gets associated with it when you do a player. So um, let's see, I'll put this picture of an old record player. I think I found. File is probably pretty big. Um, and there's a bunch of other settings. So, So there it is, yeah. Put in some metadata right there. Right. Yeah. And then so um, I generally allow downloads. That allows people to remix it. And then I just uh, I get rid of it. I'm not going to say hello to Twitter. So there's a bunch of things in here. But the basic thing is you're going to end up with this. And um, the thing about SoundCloud that's kind of neat is um, when you're right. listening to someone else's SoundCloud, like um, I'll go to – this is um, – <laughs> Ignore the picture there, but this is something Irwin recorded in Vancouver when, when we, did, we did a music jam. Okay. So when you're playing it, so jump out a little bit. So I'm at 40 seconds in. I can actually write a comment is like, that drummer is awesome. And so when people comment on SoundCloud, it gets attached to a moment in the music. So you can sort of annotate. Mm -hmm. um, and when you look at very popular sound, uh, SoundCloud mm -hmm. things, there's so many icons on the bottom, you can't even see them all. Um, you can have hyperlinks in the comments too. So one thing I've done is create talks or record an audio of a talk. Mm -hmm. And then you can annotate the timeline with links and images that are associated with the talk or the speaker slides. Right. That's pretty crazy. Just mention something. Right. Give yeah. them the link. Yeah. Right. Right, away. right. So if I have this uh, 
address and it's kind of like it works like YouTube so um, when I'm blogging um, so if I go to my um, yeah and I think you get it looks like you get more than two hours now there's a limit like um, the original counts you got up to two hours of content it looks like three but that's actually quite a bit to do these little projects so if if I'm writing and I want to use this um, sound thing um, we got demo. <laughs> I can't type without a typo. Yada, daba do blah 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 blah. Um, all I need to do, and I'll I'll use the visual editor so you can see it is, um, I'm going to paste in that URL, and it basically puts that entire player right into my post, and it'll bring along all those comments as well. Just the URL. Just the URL. No embed code. No, no embed, embed code. code. Just, isn't that a beautiful thing? Um, but you can also, if you want to upload stuff to your site, you know, if you don't want to deal with the SoundCloud, yeah, if you don't want to deal with um, that, um, here is our sound. <laughs> like I say, every sentence has a typo. Um, you can add media, mm -hmm. and you can just drag in this file that we just did. It uploads it, and this time it did actually bring along the metadata um, that was in that file, which is pretty cool. When you upload an audio file, on the bottom it says um, you have different kinds ways you can display this. So we want generally to make it a media player. So if I import that into my post, um, when I preview it, um, what I'm going to get is there's the SoundCloud thing, but you get this nice little media player. So that's kind of nice to have a nice little slick, elegant media player in your site. Both the media player and the SoundCloud thing will play on a mobile device, that, so they're an HTML5 player. So that's where you put your stuff. And then you can have that, you can have that stuff kind of mingled in with your writing. You're not sending someone else to some external site to say, click here to hear my sound. You put it right in your context, and so you can, you can introduce it, I can talk about what a beautiful audience I had today and how they made me feel appreciated and they've right. got the lame thing installed and they're looking right. at me right. funny right now mm -hmm. and then I can insert media, right. I can have pictures in there. Yeah. Um, so sound just becomes another thing you can use in your blog. I think with your photo safari, you did an audio to go with it, right? Yeah, but I'm just wondering if, 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 if it works the same way with the LMS, is like Moodle and, and um, no. Blackboard? No, they don't, they don't. Okay. They probably have other things, but they don't have the easy embed. Um, that you could probably cut and paste some embed code. I don't, I'm not too sure. Um, it all depends on how it's set up and what they've yeah. configured. And I want the easy way. <laughs> <laughs> I want the easy way. I'd like to see if you could embed the player from, like, because, you know, sometimes they got standardized um, authoring interfaces. I'm actually going to be interested to see if Moodle we can swap out the default one and put something in there. Embed a player? I'm not sure. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. YouTube I generally you have to copy an embed code um, and SoundCloud does have an embed code you know I showed you the easy way um, but when you come to here um, uh, where's where am I looking uh, there is um, they keep changing the add to playlist repost share so when you come under the share um, there's embed code yeah that you can copy so if your um, if your Moodle takes YouTube embed codes yeah, um, yeah. that one should work as well um, so that's the other way to get it in so I'm gonna formally end the demo because I've been yakking a long time and give you guys a chance to do some playing